Well, it's finally here, the day that we can talk about Alder Lake's performance, but this video isn't going to be your typical review. Let me set the stage for you because there's been a debate raging about how these new Intel processors should be tested. On one hand, there's the folks who think that uh, we should stick to Windows 10 for testing. That's understandable since, well, this new OS still has a long list of performance and usability issues. On the other hand, there's optimizations in the Windows 11 11 scheduler that can technically help Alder Lake operate at peak efficiency. I talk about some of those in the video right up here, and you should check it out since it's kind of a primer for this video. So do we test the 12900K on the most popular OS or on its quote unquote upgrade? Or do we split the testing and go with AMD CPUs on Windows 10 and Alder Lake on Windows 11? Obviously, none of that. That would be a little too weird. So we ended up testing all of the CPUs on both Windows 10 and Windows 11, and we'll compare the results. That way, all the cards will be on the table and you guys can basically make an informed decision. By the way, side note here, this was so infuriating, but it was still fun. It was a week of benchmarking with over 300 tests run because there were some major bugs and issues. I heard Mike scream a couple of times while he was benchmarking. At least we got some interesting stuff out of that testing that we'll discuss right after a message from our sponsor. by Lian Lee, compact design with enormous versatility. Check it out below. So, Alder Lake, how is it different? Well, as you might already know, Intel broke the layout of the chip into two different types of cores. There's the performance or P cores and efficient or E cores. They're designed to handle different types of loads, but typically the performance cores do the heavy lifting and the efficient ones handle background tasks. But if there's a heavily multi-threaded workload that comes up, all of the cores, the P and the E's, will come and work together on it. This leads us to the core configurations. The 12900K that I'm covering in this review, for example, it has an eight plus eight layout. And since the uh, P cores have hyper-threading enabled, that CPU has a total of 24 threads. While the 12700 and 12600 series use a more cut down form of the same chip. If you wanna get a bit of a deep per dive into how all this works, Eber did an awesome overview last week that you can find right up here. In any case, let's get to what you're here for. For all the benchmarking, the team used the latest version of Windows 10 and Windows 11 and made sure that we had all of the latest patches, including the ones AMD just rolled out for the chipset and OS. Each system was set up with 32 gigabytes of memory running at DDR4 3600 or DDR5 4800. Paired with that was an RTX 3080 Ti to make sure that the uh, GPU was not a bottleneck. In these tests, I'm focusing on the 12900K. Mike is currently busy on a separate video for the 12600K, so stay tuned for that. All in all, we're testing the Intel 12900K, 11900K, the 10900K, and for AMD, we're testing the 5950X and the 5900X. And just so you know it's fair, multi-core enhancements have been disabled for all tests. That includes PBO for AMD and the general MCE for Intel. I mean, multi-core enhancements is a great free performance tool, but boy, does it screw with power consumption. So let's get into that. Ever since Intel introduced their power limits or PL settings, their chips behaved a lot like the 11900K that you're seeing right here. When the CPU is stressed to 100%, there's a short burst of power for a few seconds in PL2 mode, followed by the chip settling at its rated TDP or PL1, which is 125 watts here. The 12900K though, well, it's completely free from its time Time limits now. It will run at around 225 watts all day, every day, and we saw it go even higher in some synthetic benchmarks. Of course, that's as long as you have enough cooling and that the motherboard is able to provide enough current. And remember, this is at Intel's default level, bone stock. That's a long way from AMD's power consumption levels. From eight to 16 cores, AMD's 5000 series manages to stay under 150 watts stock. 
that's something to keep in mind. In terms of cooling, a constant 225 watts is a lot for any heat sinks to handle. I mean, the last time that a chip behaved like this at stock was the AMD FX9590, and that thing came with an AIO cooler by default for a reason. To give you an example, check this out. We slapped a Noctua NH-U12A onto the 12900K, we set the fans to 75%, and we hit it with an all-core Maya load. And this happened when compared to other CPUs. For this CPU, you'll need a really high-end air cooler or a pretty big AIO to keep this chip at an acceptable temperature. And that leads to higher overall system costs when compared to an AMD option out there. But then again, if you're spending 650 US bucks or 750 poutine dollars on a processor, you shouldn't be cheaping out on the cooling in the first place. Now, that's all based on a heavily multi-threaded workload, which we'll get back to later for benchmarks. But what happens when you're actually gaming? Well, the temperatures come back to earth real quick and by a lot, since there isn't a single game on the market right now that's gonna max out any of these CPUs. Not any good games, at least. And while yes, it is a fire pit when it's being pushed to 100% core load, the 12900K actually consumes about as much power as older Intel CPUs and current Ryzen CPUs when it's gaming. Essentially, Intel said, well, there's no reasons to hold back on power if what they want is performance. So let's just crank it in heavy workloads, but let's make sure that when we're in normal workloads, uh, we keep that beast in check. Now sure, it's a lot of power, but obviously you didn't buy the CPU specifically for its space heater function. You bought it for its performance, and Intel has some challenges here since using two types of cores can cause some serious issues when it comes to scheduling. As it stands, the Windows 10 scheduler has never been the best when it comes to scheduling. It's so weird to say. That's why Intel designed their thread director. It's meant to give information to the OS to make sure that Alder Lake's unique design is properly used. The only issue is most of these optimizations are built into Windows 11, and that's why Intel and Microsoft have been pimping out the new operating system alongside Alder Lake. But like I said before, Windows 11 still has a lot of maturing to do before gamers and even regular users should upgrade. And that's why we wanted to test on both Windows 10 and Windows 11. And thank God that we did, because you'll see, when ThreadDirector works, it really works. But when it goes wrong, everything goes wrong. Let me explain with a Mozilla Firefox compile first. On Windows 11, the 12900K is super competitive. It easily beats the 5900X, and of course, destroys previous Intel generations. But adding the Windows 10 results to this shows exactly why we wanted to run both OSs. The 12900K is simply limping behind here with terrible performance. The workload is a disaster for Intel on Windows 10. Handbrake shows similar results. Intel edges out the competition's finest CPU. Plus, it's a double win for Intel when you consider that the 12900K goes for $150 under the 5950X's SEP. So yeah, that's Handbrake on Windows 11. Now, if we add Windows 10 in here, well, it's not quite as bad as the compiler test, but the numbers are still terrible considering this new processor can't even beat a 10900K. So what's going on here? Well, with Alder Lake being highly dependent on the OS to sort the traffic, it's clear that Intel and Microsoft haven't made the proper adjustments to Windows 10 for Alder Lake, which is frustrating to say the least. Basically, it looks like there's a breakdown in communication somewhere that's causing some multi-core workloads to be thrown over to just the efficient cores rather than running on all cores. It's hard to know what exactly is to blame here, but what's obvious is it needs to be addressed and fast. Now sure, this doesn't happen in every application, but it came up in two of the nine real-world apps that we were using here, and I'm sure that a whole lot more programs out there have the exact same behavior. Obviously, most of the effort was put into Windows 11 optimizations, but I'm hoping that Intel and Microsoft move quickly and get the Windows 10 side up to speed, because right now, this makes it hard to recommend any Alder Lake CPUs for prosumers. At least, it's not the case for every single single app. Take Cinebench R23, for example. In multi-core, the stock 12900K 
competes with and beats the Ryzen 9 5950X in both Windows 10 and Windows 11. It's a slim 5-6% to margin, which might seem little since it's competing with a one-year-old CPU, but given the fewer threads and the lower price, it's an alright trade. When we go single threaded here, that's where Alder Lake really shines, with a score exceeding 2000 points regardless of the OS. When compared to AMD's 5950X, it's a solid 21% lead. One thing that I noticed in both Cinebench runs is that Windows 11 seems to impact the score of both AMD and Intel CPUs negatively. It's a very small difference, mostly under 1%, but it is consistently underperforming in Windows 11 for Cinebench. Bench. Moving on to our DaVinci Resolve test, you can see that the 12900K once again takes the lead in Windows 11. Adding the Windows 10 results doesn't change that lead, but you can see Alder Lake takes a little hit here. And that's while every other CPU, except for the 10900K, get a slight boost in performance. Moving on to Premiere, Intel can actually use its IGP, or integrated graphics, during the render. Now, of course, Alder Lake is best here, thanks to the IGP, but look at how much Windows 11 has improved the integrated graphics performance. It also brings a huge boost to the 10 and 11th generation of Intel CPUs. Blender Cycles repeats the same thing that we've already seen in both OSs, but I think that we're also seeing a bit of variability make its way into these results. It's the same thing in the EV render, but this time, AMD's 5950X edges out the 12900K. It's a very slim win, but a win nonetheless. And AMD keeps that lead for our MetaShape tests. It's interesting to see here that core count really matters. I mean, look at the 11900K here. It's pretty sad. It's crazy how well the 12900K performs against the very best AMD has to offer, especially in multi-threaded performance. I mean, remember, this has the same amount of cores, but it has eight fewer threads to work with. But what about gaming? Well, the popular thought is that Windows 11 isn't that great for gaming since it has a lot of background tasks running. And, I mean, technically, Alder Lake is supposed to be built for that kind of situation, right? Well, in CSGO, it's by far the fastest processor here. You can't even compare it with the other Intel generations. The 12900K is just in a different league. Now, the order of things doesn't change very much when we move over from Windows 10 to Windows 11. The 12900K is still on top, and the 10900K is dead last. Now, do you see what I see? Comparing Windows 10 to 11, you can really see why people aren't happy with what Microsoft has done. The highest end chips get their performance cut down significantly. The only exceptions are the slower 11900K and 10900K, which get about the same frame rate in both situations. Valorant, on the other hand, sees the situation flipped a bit. AMD's 5900 series takes a fairly good lead in the FPS average department, while the 12900K delivers a more consistent frame rate. Windows 11 unfortunately stuns the AMD CPUs and puts them very close to the 12900K. Overall though, the gaming results almost mirror what we saw in the real world benchmarks. The i9 12900K is able to offer impressive performance against AMD's 5950X in either OS's. Now, as you might have noticed, you'll consistently see lower 1% lows on Windows 11, and that is in almost every game, regardless of the CPU. That's why we're kind of saying that Windows 11 is bad for gaming. Moving on to Rainbow Six, it has two things I need to call out too. First of all, under Windows 10, the 12900K seems to be underperforming, while the 10900K excels. Also, regardless of the OS, AMD's 1% lows are just trash. It's all over the place, and we troubleshooted for a while. Now, Intel's flagship does dominate every now and then, like in Far Cry 6, but even there, Windows 11 still handicaps the performance of the chip. But hey, like I said, when you launch a new architecture with a new OS, there's bound to be some problems, and this is certainly one of the cases. The last couple of games all basically show the same thing that we've already seen. This time though, there's a bit more of a GPU limitation. Basically, Intel comes out with some solid performance numbers in both Windows versions, however, However, some games just won't really benefit that much from more CPU power. Some titles just need more graphics horsepower than others to make a noticeable difference. 
And yes, guys, this applies even at 1080p. Also, here in Red Dead Redemption 2, the 12900K takes a hit into 1% lows under Windows 11. It's something that affected every CPU here at some point in the review. So I guess that, uh, you know, it's Alder Lake's turn to bear the curse. So these were the gaming benchmarks. All in all, this CPU is a huge step forward for Intel. It's a new architecture, it's a new mixed core design, a new process node, a new OS. Really, it couldn't be more brand new for the company that got stuck on the same architecture for five years. Five years is an eternity in CPUs. But all this brand new newness, this, this rebirth, all of this, well, it's at the mercy of an OS from a company that couldn't be bothered to complete it and iron out the flaws before it releases it. Even if Alder Lake hadn't come out, think about it, there are still huge inconsistencies in performance with AMD processors. So it's not specific to Intel, although Intel does depend on the new scheduler in Windows 11 for the best performance. Anyways, is it good value? Sure, it's actually surprisingly good value when compared to the 5950X. It's better in most cases, and you can save at least 100 bucks. But the whole ecosystem will need to mature, the product will need to mature, the OS will need to mature, the apps will need to mature. And yeah, it seems like Alder Lake is just gonna get better with time. And don't think I'm shilling for Intel here. AMD isn't sitting on their hands. It's coming next year, and it's coming fast. And that's what I love, competition. In any case, that's pretty much it for today's video. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video, right here to subscribe to the channel, right here to see my video on DDR4 versus DDR5, since both platforms are supported on Alder Lake, so it's relevant, and right here to subscribe to Boot Sequence, my channel. I did it right. I did it, right? It was good? Yeah? Okay, cool. Bye, guys. Okay.